What's up? Quarantine hair. Put it up in a bun. <laughs> um, I also wear my hair like this, like, often. When you're in the house all day. But, um, how are you guys doing? Hi, I'm in my backyard. Finished the day. Oh, you guys, I forgot about my, um, that's my hammock frame right there. That yellow thing. Oh my god. I gotta get on the hammock. We could do that, right? We could do the hammock thing. Hold on, let me wipe, wipe the the lens. One second. Is that a little clear? A little bit? Anyways. How are you guys doing? Quarantine life, shelter in place. You guys good? Okay, wait, the camera's right here. Um Yeah, just wanted to come on here, pop up, check in. I'm done with the day been productive you know what actually to be honest with you I've been more productive during quarantine in these last two weeks than I think I was like before not not all the time before but definitely like lately um I'm having more meetings yes we're all we're all getting on zoom and stuff like that but I'm having more meetings new meetings um, new ideas, new business. Um, yeah, like it's 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 I I can't I can't complain. You know, everybody's texting everybody and saying, "Hey, how's it going? How you doing?" In the apocalypse, zombies, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff, or maybe not so good stuff. You know, are you staying healthy? This is a serious thing. Um, but overall, you know, blessed to be safe, healthy, good, um, and all that, and, and, and busy, busy, I mean, I love it, this is so great, um, that's one of the things that, um, I'm grateful for in this time is that, you know, just being an entrepreneur almost my whole life, you know, having part-time gigs, part-time jobs throughout all of that. <sighs> kind of since I graduated college in 2003. Um, and working from home here and there just throughout that time and really working from home literally straight for almost the last two years. Um, yeah, this really hasn't been too much change for me. Um and that's not, that's not to brag or anything like that, but, <clears throat> you know, that's just been my life. Um, and so people are definitely texting me and saying, how are you doing? I'm like, all good. <laughs> so, um, it's been good though. Um, I'm thankful that, you know, the, the transition has been well. I also don't have kids. Um, so I know that's been a big thing for a lot of people. Um, and, and pe folks are adjusting. Folks are adjusting. Um, but yeah, how are you guys doing? Butters is doing what he does. Butters, what are you doing? Butters has complete quarantine hair. <laughs> he had, he had quarantine hair before that, but we're, you know, I am, I am cutting him a little bit every day. That's one of the things that I've committed to. Um, he's my child. And so I'm, I'm, I'm committed to cutting him a little bit every day. Um, and grooming him up so that uh, he could come out of the quarantine looking decent as well, too. Um, I also need to twist it up in the front. My mom yesterday was saying, because I, I said, I said, you know, I got a lot of grays. Because uh, I had forgot something. I was, I, I lost my train of thought. And she was like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 38. Um, <laughs> but, and I had lost my train of thought. And I said, I know you see the grays in my hair, right? And she said, I know. I was looking at that the other day. <laughs> my mom. She's going to say, uh, you know, she's going to say what's on her mind pretty often. Uh, but anyways, just checking in. I also wanted to pop on here and talk about or or just mention this one thing. I mentioned it in, at the beginning of one of my shows. I think when I was talking to Jasper about finances, which was a great show. Go check that out. Um, we did that last Thursday, just talked about, you know, your finances and, and maybe stuff you should be thinking about in this time. Um, but check that out. And by the way, my next show interview is going to be awesome. I have, I have a great guest. She's from In The Mood Medicine. 
Uh, we're going to be talking on Tuesday. Um, and where we, our tentative title for the show is uh, Recalibrate Your Life. Recalibrate. Re, recalibrate your life. Um, but yeah. Um, look out for that. I think it's April 7th is when we're doing that. But anyways, just checking in. Um, like, subscribe, and all and on all those things. Share this, um, and just checking in on, on on all my my online folks. And I just wanted to, yeah, just reiterate this one thing that I've been thinking about, just so it's out and said, which is that, you know, in this time, it makes me think about tragedies and tragic tragedy movies. You know, the genre of tragedy um, in movies. Because that's literally what we, we're in, you know, and I've always loved them. I've always loved tragedies. I've always been attracted to tragic movies, um, for example. Um, and what, the, the reason why I had thought about this is because I was, <laughs> I was, it was like before everything really escalated with coronavirus, I, um, I had to go to like CVS or Walgreens in the middle of the night. I had to get some feminine products. And so anyways, um, the, the escalation had just started and it was just starting to be the craziness. And it was at that moment that I really thought about the whole, like this really being a tragic thing, a tragedy, something that's like really big because I was then just riding around at like two, three in the morning and just kind of people watching and people watching. And the next day I was just people watching and people watching because I, I was just interested in how everybody's really responding to all of this, how everybody's taking all of this. I mean, I'm sure for the past two weeks, you guys have been scrolling on social media, you know, just watching folks and how we're all processing this. It's so interesting to me. I love it. You know, it's 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 what would you do during times of 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 major survival? You know, what do people do? How do people react? What do, what do they change, and all that? And um, so I started thinking about like how I just I've always loved tragic movies. I've always loved um, tragedies. Um, one of the first ones that I remember is this movie called Alive. Um, which came out in 1993. If you haven't heard of it, look it up. I'll tell you the story really, really quick. Um, basically, it's about this soccer team that was traveling um, overseas in Europe, and they were in a jet flying, and there was about, I think, 20 people aboard or something like that. They crashed in the middle of, like, the mountains and the Alps in the middle of nowhere. I think eight people die on impact, and, like, maybe 12 people or something like that live. And then they send out the search party to try and find them. They look up, the helicopter's up there swimming. They're like, we're here, we're here, but they don't see them. Now this is back in the you know early 90s. So it's like, you know, and that still happens today, but like, you know, the technology's a little bit better, but you know, they couldn't find them. They couldn't find them. Um, and so they're out there in the middle of the night. And I think they stayed out there maybe 30, 40 days, something like that, maybe even longer than that. And they had food at first, but of course then they ran out and they ended up, some of them ended up having to eat um, human flesh to stay alive. That's why the name of the movie is called Alive. And I'll never forget that movie. Like it's, it's almost like, um, you know, I think about it. I've thought about it plenty of times just throughout my life just and referred back to it and just been like, dang, I can't believe they did that. And it was based on a true story, too. So that's what makes it even more like, wow, like, you know, when you really get into it, like, you know, it's kind of almost when people say that phrase, hey, what would you do if I had a gun to your head? You know, shout out <laughs> um, Vivica Fox, set it off. But what would you do if I had a gun to your head? You know what I mean? You really have like two seconds to think like, what would you do, you know? Um, so tragedies, um, movies, tragic movies. Um, I think of Titanic. You know, of course, I love the love story, but like, you know, this boat is about to go down. You know, they don't know it, but it's about to go down. And, 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 and just like just like coronavirus, we didn't know this was coming. Most of us didn't. 
So now we're in it. Now what? What's going to happen? What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? What are you going to save? What are you going to leave? What are you going to throw away? What's going to be different when we come out of this, you know? Um, I, lo I love that. Even within two weeks, people are talking about, you know, it's going to be the new normal when we go out. There's no going back to normal. Like, it's not going to be going back. There's going to be a new normal. And, and people are thinking about how they're going to be in that new normal. How What, what um, changes have they liked during this time, not liked? Um, and during tragedies, people, people do, we do lose people. Um, so that's the downside. That is the da complete downside, of course. Um, but the silver lining, the good parts, um, are the things that I think, um, attract me to, you know, tragic, tragic stories. Um, other ones that I just wanted to, or that I thought, yeah, to mention is, uh, like Kobe Bryant, you know, passing recently, um, wasn't it just the, the, the anniversary of the passing of, uh, Nipsey Hussle? Um, Michael Jackson was a big one for me. So, you know, cause I used to be a DJ at that time and that was what, 2009. And, uh, I just remember, yeah, I was living in LA and I was already contemplating like retiring from DJing and moving forward. But, you know, when Michael Jackson died, I really thought about, just his life and like what he was here on this earth to do like he was literally on this earth for 50 years to do music like probably one of the clearest purposes in life like I don't think he I mean he had other talents but by far his talent was here was here to do music and so I really at that time I just remember contemplating like and really realizing, you know, again, but more pointedly, that we are all here on this earth for a reason and we're we're here to really figure that out. And we're here to really find out what our our purpose and purposes are um, at any given moment. Um, and so, you know, that was a time of, of tragedy, real life tragedy and, and thinking about that story um, and coming out from it different. And so, you know, I really think that's, you know, those are the great things that are going to come out from, from, from coronavirus for sure. And I'm looking forward to that. And it's even, you know, I'm not filming this live, everybody, but so like, subscribe, all that, share this again, um, <clears throat> and, and, and come to my, my next live show. Once again, it's, I think it's April 7th, the next Tuesday. Ah. Um, but because, you know, the, the working from home has been kind of seamless for me um, and things like that. It's, it's challenged me in the last couple of days. You know, once I got past that, I was like, oh, this is easy. It's the same thing, you know, whatever. It's really challenged me to look for deeper purpose in this time. It's challenged me to um, really think different. Hold on. I got to pause. I'm coming right back. Okay, back. Sorry. Um recording on my phone I forgot that I, I that's see that's one of the things that I need to do during quarantine is clean out all the media all the screenshots all the memes all the video on this phone we all need to do it um <laughs> and so it's cleared up and so it was only giving me a, a, a you know a little bit of time to record but um but what I was saying was that it's this time has really um challenged me um, in the last couple days to now, okay, we got through the first two weeks, you know, this is seamless, you know, for someone like me who's used to working from home. Now what? You know what? I need to find purpose in this too, though. I need to be challenged in this too, though. What, what, what things can I be working on? Can I be improving? Can I be making better and honing in on? Um, and so, I, you know, I thought of a couple things in the last couple days, and so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, and and working on those skill sets and things. But overall, you know, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm busy. So I know I'm doing some of that already. Um, but yeah, you guys, um, tragedy. You know, I think there's a lot of silver linings. Um, oh, and, the, and then another one, another one real quick before I go and I'm out of here, is that I had posted a clip on my Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, um, it's at Rita Forte, but I posted a, tr uh, a clip on Twitter with uh, Dame Dash. He was on The Breakfast Club, and he was talking about how his wife had had recently had a um, miscarriage. 
right? And they went through that. And um, one of the things he said in that whole conversation and discussion is, you know, the only, the only reason, and this is very definite, I think there's a spectrum, but he said the only reason for pain is to define you. The only reason for pain is to define you. And think about that. I mean, it definitely holds true for me. Um, anytime I've had, you know, heartache, heartbreak, hard times, you know, low times, um, quote unquote, right? Um, I've came out of it different. I've came out of it changed. I've came out of it better. I've came out of it um, new, the new normal. So um, I do look forward to all of that, all, all the new normal um, for everyone. I'll be people watching. Um, but anyways, um, hope everybody's well, check in, comment, uh, I might pop back in once again, uh, towards the end of this week or something like that, but be well. I love that I see people saying that, be well, and, uh, I'll see you again. All right, you guys, peace.